Well, hello there everyone. Today I'm going to tie one of the most uh, legendary and classic flies ever um, for for both yeah, sea trout and uh, well trout in any form. Uh, this is uh, the famous and very very proven uh, woolly bogger. Uh, we're going to use some marabou, some flashing gold, some uh, rubber legs. I have applied already a, a breast bead as you can see and uh, of course some dubbing and uh, and a palmer hair. Well first of all we're gonna make the tail and the tail for this fly is gonna be made from marabou which is uh, a very nice material for well almost all types of flies because it uh, it is very very vivid and very very uh, it moves very very well in uh, in almost no current so it's it's great for both lakes and for uh, for streams alike and uh, it's also a very good material for, let's say, uh, saltwater flies, uh, for like the Danish coast or whatnot. Uh, this is actually a pattern that has uh, that can be used for almost any kind of fish, and that is because it basically looks like well, it basically looks like food. I think, I think that is one of the reasons why this uh, pattern is 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 so effective. I've taken some uh, some marabou. Uh, uh, feathers here, cut off just both the sides of the marabou hack, uh, feather and I'm just gonna tie this in. This is not, we don't need this to be completely uniform because we're gonna cover this in, in dubbing further on. So for now that is good. I'm gonna cut, cut it clean in a second. Turning it down, fairly long down on, uh, on, uh, on, the, on, the, on the hook and then I'm gonna trim my tail so, and I'm doing that with my fingers and not my scissors because I don't want these to be, I want these to be in different lengths so they will move individually in the water. Like so is nice. I'm just gonna cut off some of this crap up here. What I was saying is this pattern is, uh, is I think so uh, universally good because uh, it it can look like well anything if you if you retrieve this very fast it, it can look like a small bait fish if you retrieve it slow it can look what uh, like a leech as uh, as the original uh, designer of this fly pattern meant it to be but uh, well ba basically it just looks like something you want to to eat from well at least from a trout's point of view then I'm gonna take some strands of gold flesh this is. Uh, this is a flesh called uh, Glisten Glow, a flesh I, I'm very fond of and use this for a lot of flies. Just going to tie two strands in on one side and two strands in on, uh, on the opposite side. I don't want too much flesh in this fly. This is actually one of the flies that I think you could well, if you're fishing for trout and uh, and you should pick only one fly to bring anywhere in the world for trout, then my first, uh, on top of my head, uh, uh, fly to bring would be this one. This one produces and produces and produces. It's also fairly good for uh, for a sea run trout that enters the rivers to spawn again. So it's, it has just unbelievably number of... Uh, applications like so and then I'm gonna take some uh, some rubber legs because this is my own take on, on this uh, fairly famous and uh, and well uh, indestructible pattern so I'm taking some uh, some rubber some barred rubber legs in uh, in orange and just tying them tying one down on your side right there and then I'm doing the same on the opposite side this will add a nice effect to the fly when when it's retrieved 
these I don't want them to just hang about there so I'm gonna tie these pull fairly hard on them and just tie all the way up to the front of my fly with these two because I don't I just want these two to come out all the way at the front of the fly as well this is a bit messy sorry for that tying these two legs down on the sides as well up here in the front pulling them out to the sides like that One of these is a bit longer than I prefer, so I'm just going to cut this off in the, the right length. Approximately something like that. Good, so far so good. And of course I have uh, used this uh, this uh, this gold head or this uh, brass bead to, to give this fly um, a bit more weight. Because I wanted to to kind of jig in the water, and it will do that with the with this one. I I have this fly both with the regular brass bead, uh, but I also use this a lot with a tungsten a tungsten bead because tungsten has a very high density and works well great with flies like this. So if you want to get really down and deep, uh, definitely go for uh, for the tungsten bead. And as I said, I have. Uh, the same size of fly with with both in my uh, in my fly box both the tungsten and uh, and without the tungsten now I've tied down a rooster hackle just tied it down in the tip as I always do and um, because when you when I'm gonna turn this I want the uh, the hackle to taper as well and it's gonna do that because the shortest fibers is gonna be down here at uh, at the tail of my fly and then gradually as I move uh, move the dubbing upwards and the hackle upwards it's gonna be uh, be longer and longer hackle fibers and I'm taking some uh, STF dubbing in black not gonna do a dubbing loop for this one it's not necessary I'm just gonna uh, just gonna dub it on directly on the thread I'm using a, a Vivus 14.0 uh, thread for this a very thin but very strong thread And of course I want this body to be tapered as well, so I want it to be not that thick further down and then I want it to gradually be thicker and thicker as I move up towards the end of the fly here. Applying some more dubbing. One of the tricks to making a perfect dubbing body is, is to use not to use too much dubbing at a time, at any one time, because if you do that it's going to be uh, you're gonna make it harder on yourself to make a, make a, a good nice dubbing body like that and then all the way up here I'm gonna do a small trick because I don't want these to stick out in front of the fly I want them my legs to to stick out behind be pointing backwards what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do like so And there you have the legs are now pointing in exactly the way I want them to. I'm gonna turn my hackle. And of course I'm going to use a few more turns up here at the head so that the, f the f front part of the fly will have, a f will have more hackle materials.
upside my hackle down. And as I said, this is definitely one of the patterns, if you're a trout fisherman, that you don't want to leave home without. I know this is not an exact imitation, and I know about match the hatch and stuff like that. And I do enjoy doing that myself, but, well, in those days where, you know, nothing is working or God forbid you want to try some of your famous uh, trout rivers uh, for, for night fishing where no one is about and, uh, and the trouts are not uh, selective and actually very active, then this fly is the way to go, or one of the ways to go. Cutting off my rubber legs so they are the length I want them. I'm going to take my scissor and just pull out some of this dubbing and making sure no hackle fibers is uh, caught in between here. I'll take my dubbing needle for this. This is a fairly sparsely dressed uh, volley bugger. You can definitely make them a lot more hairy. Well, there you have it. Woolly bugger with uh, with the twist, some orange rubber legs. Thank you for watching.